Hey everybody, I'm Mitch, and today I'm going to be talking about Gloomhaven, Mage Knight, and a new game called Dungeon Alliance that I just got. So why am I talking about these three games? Because as far as I know, they're the only uh, Euro-style uh, dungeon crawler type of games. Now, if you know of some others that are the Euro-style games um, and are still have that dungeon crawler or even adventure, Mage Knight's more adventure kind of feel, let me know. Maybe put comments in, in the bottom and maybe other people be interested in that as well. And so I'm trying to uh, share with you what I uh, see about these games and, and uh, see what other people think as well. Too long, didn't watch. Everybody has heard of Gloomhaven and Mage Knight. They have an excellent reputation as being wonderful games, especially for solo. But Dungeon Alliance may be the gem in the rough that you're looking for. It might become one of your top games. Check it out. So Mage Knight was the first of these three games that I purchased. Gloomhaven is one that I saw for a long time, wasn't quite sure, but I finally purchased it. And if I could only pick one of the three games, I would pick Gloomhaven. And in fact, if I could only pick one game among all the dungeon crawler type of games um, or battle the monster type of games, it would be Gloomhaven. So why did I purchase Dungeon Alliance? I purchased it because I really do like the um, Euro style puzzling it out type of game. Um, and I liked the Mage Knight, um, but I really wanted it to be in a dungeon type of environment. If I have Gloomhaven, why would I purchase something like Dungeon Alliance? Well, ugh. if I think about just coming out and playing a game, this box is just incredible. It's just not easy to even think about sometimes. I've got all of this stuff, all the tiles in little boxes, and I just have to dig everything out just to get in and start playing. So that's kind of overwhelming sometimes. Even though they have a random deck and a random dungeon that you can create, um, I, when I think about that, it just sometimes feels overwhelming. Same thing for Mage Knight. Mage Knight, when I think about playing it, it just feels overwhelming just to get started. So let's talk about getting things to the table. <laughs> this is Gloomhaven, and this is just the stuff that goes into the top of the box. And I've spent a lot of time creating tuck boxes and things. And here's all the monsters and the heroes. And so the good thing is it's got a lot of stuff, but it's got a lot of stuff. So even though it is pretty well organized here in my system, still the idea of getting it to the table is a mental thing that uh, is a little challenge to get over sometimes. By contrast, here's the Dungeon Alliance box, so it's much easier uh, to get to the table. Now, don't get me wrong, there's lots of components, and I even had to create my own tray for all the monsters, um, but it still is much easier to get to the table. But it actually turns out that Mage Knight is the easiest to get to the table. Again, I've created my own tuck boxes and uh, holders for the little tokens. Um, but you can see it's pretty easy to just pull things out and get them to the table. Now, uh, it just seems that uh, no matter what game that you get of this style, you're probably going to either have to buy uh, an organizer or create your own organizers because there's just so much in each of the boxes, which is a good thing. So now I'll just kind of talk about the games a little bit um, and use these as kind of representations of the games. Um, so just because they're easy to get to the table doesn't mean that they're necessarily quick to set up or take down. Um, Mage Knight, if you know about Mage Knight, even though it's easy to get out of the box and the box is small and it's easy to take downstairs and not overwhelming mentally to just take that little box downstairs, it still takes quite a bit of time to just get the cards out and organize them properly to get set up. The same thing's true for Dungeon Alliance and for Gloomhaven. So all of these games there's some time that you'll invest in, in setup and, and breakdown. I would say that Gloomhaven takes the longest, Mage Knight and Dungeon Alliance probably about the same. 
Now, since we're looking at the tiles and the figures here, the miniatures, um, I'll just say a little bit about this. Um, I'm not going to go too much into the artwork and things like that. You can check out my other video uh, where I talk about Dungeon Alliance as Mage Knight in a dungeon. Um, and I really think that that's a good way to think about this. Um, but here you can see definitely the best set of tiles among these three games is Mage Knight. They're just artistically the most beautiful. Um, the characters as well, the miniature is definitely the best because it is, it is painted and it look, looks nice, but you only have one. Um, in Gloomhaven, uh, you just typically have two. And when I'm doing this discussion here, I'm only talking about playing it from a solo perspective. Um, so you can check out some other videos and things like that um, as far as the cooperative or competitive um, types of play. Um, but in Gloomhaven when I'm playing, I'm usually only going to have one or two characters out anyway. Um, and for the enemies, I will have standees for Gloomhaven like that. Um, for uh, Mage Knight and Dungeon Alliance, I really have tokens out there instead. So I would say that the tiles of uh, Gloomhaven are a little nicer than those of Dungeon Alliance, but Dungeon Alliance, they're organized very n nicely and they really feel like a dungeon. So if you're wanting to do a dungeon crawler type of thing, it's Dungeon Alliance for absolutely for sure. Uh, Gloomhaven is kind of like that, but it really doesn't feel like a dungeon, at least to me. Plus, the other thing about Gloomhaven is these tiles are so oddly shaped, and, and that's interesting, uh, but uh, you have to invest a lot of time uh, up front either creating those tuck boxes or buying organizations so that you can organize it well, because uh, it's kind of a mess to organize tiles like that. Same thing for something like Descent. Okay, so what I really want to focus on now is try to give you a sense of what it's like, what it feels like to play each of these games. Um, so if you own one of them, you can kind of see what it feels like uh, to play the other, perhaps, um, as you're looking at the different games. So I'm actually going to start with the rule books, um, because part of the feel is as you're playing, how often do I have to look up a rule or something like that? All of these do take a good investment to learn the rules and things like that. Um, just like any good dungeon crawler, there's uh, quite a bit that you need to understand. Um, but for Mage Knight, um, they even have a walkthrough that you go through. Um, and then the rule book. Um, I've been playing this for a couple of years, actually, and still... I'm having to look up um, rules about what about this situation and that situation. So uh, having to stop the game to look up a rule, even though if you look on my channel, you'll find I've created videos to try to make that easier, a video reference of the rules in Mage Knight. But remembering the rules, probably the hardest in Mage Knight. Um, Gloomhaven, uh, it has lots of rules as well. Uh, you can see all of these things. Um, and so also in Gloomhaven, I tend to have to look up the rules, um, but uh, didn't take me as long to figure it out as it did in Mage Knight. Uh, for Dungeon Alliance, it, it took me a little bit to read through that, but it is very simple to remember the rules comparatively compared to the others. Um, that doesn't mean that the gameplay itself is simplistic, but rather the rules are, are streamlined, and so it's actually much easier to remember most of the rules, and I had very few things that I have to remember or to look up about how does this work or how does that work. So really, when I talk about looking up things, I'm really thinking about the game mechanics. So every time I have to stop, it kind of takes you out of the game a little bit. And of course, it slows down the pace of the game. So the next thing I want to talk about is how long does it take me to play the game? Make no mistake, all of these are going to take a good bit of your time to play them. Um, actually, it turns out that Gloomhaven, you can probably play the quickest. Uh, Dungeon Alliance uh, next, and then uh, Mage Knight is probably third. Um, although Dungeon Alliance can take as long. I think the first uh, game that I played probably did take about three, three and a half hours. Some of that was stopping, um, but it can take quite a while. So what about 
creating shorter kinds of games. Um, Gloomhaven, because it's really scenario type of based, you really don't stop in the middle of it, so um, you kind of are committed to, to finishing that scenario. But they do have a random uh, dungeon type of thing where you pull out the cards and you can play that. So you can make a short version of that. The only question is just thinking about taking this great big huge box just to play that short game. And by the way, when I say short game, I really mean about an hour. So Mage Knight, can I play that in about an hour? Uh, kind of. Um, I can either uh, pre-seed my deck by pulling adventure cards or spell cards into my deck and boosting it up. So yes, I can do that in about an hour, but often it feels like either I'm starting from ground zero and just leveling up a little, um, or I'm already near the top and about the only thing that I can do is just move a couple spaces and then destroy a city. So it's really hard to make this... Um, when you're trying to play it like the base game, you have to use your imagination and create your own other types of games to play really a shorter game of Mage Knight. So this is probably the most difficult to make a shorter game out of. So with Dungeon Alliance, it's uh, pretty a little bit easier than Mage Knight to create a shorter game. You just uh, explore less um, dungeons, and most of the time, the feel of this is I'm just going through. It's really the most dungeon crawl type of game. You're going room to room, battling monsters, constantly battling monsters. Um, so you can easily make this a shorter game. The only thing is, in this game, like Mage Knight, you're leveling up. So if we compare that to Gloomhaven, in Gloomhaven you level up over different game sessions. Um, so slowly level up um, over the campaign kind of thing. Whereas Mage Knight, the whole point of the thing is to be leveling up. And so that's the big focus of this. But you're also recruiting units and things like that. So that's different from these other games. In the other two games, you don't recruit any units. Um, in Dungeon Alliance, you level up very quickly compared to Mage Knight. And so you're uh, always adding new cards to your deck. So both um, uh, Dungeon Alliance and Mage Knight are uh, deck builder types of games where you're pulling in cards into your hand and becoming more and more powerful. Um, done in uh, Gloomhaven, you only do that between sessions. So uh, for Dungeon Alliance to play a shorter game and use the more powerful cards, I would have to um, precede the deck just like I would have to do in uh, Mage Knight. But the difference is, in Mage Knight at the top levels, you're really not moving from one square to the next very much and really just focusing on basically attacking one or two cities, very, very powerful cities. On the other hand, in Dungeon Alliance, you would be uh, moving in to a number of tiles and then uh, attacking and de defeating a number of monsters. So as we talk about sessions and, and things like the game length and things like that, um, Gloomhaven is, of the three, the only one that is really uh, a scenario based. Now, Dungeon Alliance does have a campaign system. I haven't actually played that, but uh, take a look at this. Are you kidding me? Look at all of these scenarios that you go through. Um, so if you want a story type of game where you're going through and doing the story, Gloomhaven is no doubt the one. And that is why I would uh, choose Gloomhaven if I only had uh, one of those three games to choose. Now, as I talk about only one of the three games to choose, uh, that's also assuming that I've got uh, an infinite budget here and I can pick one. Um, Gloomhaven is the most expensive, but Mage Knight, uh, depending upon what you have uh, and find online, uh, might be second. Uh, so currently Gloomhaven, and especially if Frosthaven comes out, that's I, I don't know what that final cost will be. Um, but Gloomhaven, if you just go online right now, it's about $120 uh, to purchase, um, whereas Dungeon Alliance is only $60. So um, if you're really not trying to do a whole story scenario story, but are really about the gameplay, about defeating the monsters and everything, uh, this might be much better. And, and for the price point, if you're on a limited budget, uh, this might be the one. Uh, you could look and see, and maybe for Mage Knight, um, again, if you're, we're talking budget, um, you might be able to find versions of it. But right now, a lot of times they only have the Ultimate Edition, which is more expensive.
expensive than the base game because it has all the expansions with it. But you might be able to find a good deal there, but it, it seems to be sometimes right now harder to find some of the Mage Knight. Now again, talking about uh, the only one, which one would I pick? Um, if you are most interested in the dungeon feel, like maybe a Descent or um, uh, Dungeons and Dragons board games or Massive Darkness or things like that, um, then this definitely is what you want if you're really about that dungeon feel. That's what this feels like as you're going through it. You're just killing these monsters, um, and especially if you want that Euro style, um, without you know rolling the dice all the time just to see what happens, but actually trying to decide your fate by choosing the right action, um, this is the game you want. This would be the one you would buy. Now, if you're more into an adventure and you ultimately want to be able to conquer a city, uh, Mage Knight is the focus that you would have. And in particular, one thing that's very unique about uh, Mage Knight is that you recruit units. So you go into different cities and you can influence people and you can recruit them. So you can kind of think of it as you're building up your army um, and you're becoming a great captain because you gain reputation as well. And then you eventually attack a city. So the idea that you're you're conquering keeps and mage towers and um, eventually conquering a city. So if you think of the conquering type of thing, that, that kind of theme or, or whatever, or if you just really like this idea of influencing and, and recruiting an army, Mage Knight is definitely the one that you would go with. Now, as I had mentioned, uh, Gloomhaven is scenario-based, and there are times when you're in the city of Gloomhaven, and you can uh, purchase items. So as you go through the dungeon and uh, uh, destroy the enemies, you can collect gold, and you can trade that in to buy items. And there are also um, city events that you can go in, and you read the text, and you perform some action, and a consequence will happen. And then as you're going from the city uh, to one of your adventure sites, um, there are what they call road events. And in the road events are like the city events where you'll read some text, it will give you an option of something to choose, and you will make a choice and see what happens. Also, you have your character, um, you actually keep track of uh, the amount of gold and the experience that you gain, and you can boost your card. So you actually, because uh, the upgrades happen between scenarios, you track it on a, uh, these little notepads, and your party, your, your group of uh, adventurers, uh, you track what's going on, and Gloomhaven itself uh, upgrades uh, based upon what your party has done. So if you have heard about Gloomhaven, you may have seen this map, and you may know that Gloomhaven is what is called a legacy game. And so in a legacy game, you are actually up here placing stickers on the places that you've been, you gain goals, and so over time, you're actually affecting uh, the world that you inhabit and, and that you interact with. So here is where the, the story element of Gloomhaven becomes even more than just reading through a scenario book, but it's actually making you feel like you're actually engaged in this world. So one other point that I'll talk about is in Gloomhaven, um, like we said, that you're you're upgrading your character over time. And so you kind of, from, from turn game to game to game, you're still using the same character. And the character actually has a card that you'll select, um, which is the character's goal in life, if you will. And you, you get to, when you finally accomplish this goal, you actually retire your character. So there's this kind of idea that you're really invested in the characters that you're playing the game with. Now, I specifically mention that uh, for this main reason that one of the complaints against uh, Dungeon Alliance was that the ca characters are too generic. Well, if by that you mean that uh, you don't have this full character, this one class of character that you're uh, maintaining over time, yeah, that might be true. So Mage Knight and Dungeon Alliance are very different than that. Uh, they aren't uh, trying to do that at all. Instead, in both Mage Knight and Dungeon Alliance, your character or characters in Dungeon Alliance are leveling up within one game session. 
So every game session is starting over. You're starting from ground zero and you level all the way up and um, then you become super powerful and mighty. And so it's just one game session. Now, that actually might be a way that you can shorten the game um, if you think about breaking it up into three sessions, for example. But to do so, you would probably want to get a piece of paper and maybe create your own form in order for you to keep track of where you were in the dungeon and what your cards were and things like that. That's not out of the box. You, you don't do that. Um, you, you typically uh, go all the way from zero to hero. Um, and so that's why it does take a while. But the focus is leveling up all within one game session. So then as we think about that, between Mage Knight and Dungeon Alliance, which of the characters are more generic? Well, it is true that in Dungeon Alliance you just have um, humans, uh, half-orcs, elves, um, dwarfs, and so generic types, if you will. But even if they're the same race, they have uh, different abilities, and there's actually 17 different heroes, each of them with different abilities um, that you can combine in different ways, and each individual hero has three cards that are specifically uh, targeted or adapted for them, and so you've got 17 unique different types of heroes. On the other hand, Mage Knight, you have uh, in the game walkthrough, you have an introductory uh, couple of paragraphs that tell you about um, the backstory of Mage Knight. But your hero uh, just has a unique name and a unique symbol and one card that's unique to them. Uh, but there's no real story about that character. It just uh, talks about the, the different abilities, a little bit like influence or dealing with uh, blood or uh, attacks or damage. But the rest of your hand is the same among all the heroes. So the variety in games like uh, Mage Knight and Dungeon Alliance is how you're building up your hand over the game session and what you choose to do with it, not um, on the character itself over many sessions. So uh, if the question of whether your character is generic or not, um, well, Mage Knight is far more generic um, than Dungeon Alliance, but both of them are much more generic than uh, Gloomhaven. As opposed to most dungeon crawlers, such as the Dungeons & Dragons board game, Zombie Side, Massive Darkness, Descent, things like that, where you typically are rolling dice and moving through the dungeon. Um, these three games, and the reason that I'm comparing them together, are about um, defeating the monsters or enemies by choosing uh, cards from your hands and how to act uh, based upon those cards. So for the one to three hours or however long that you're playing each game, uh, you're essentially, uh, time after time again, uh, looking at your cards in your hand and trying to decide, which card should I play now? So really, in the most amount of time that you're dealing with the games, all three of these games are similar in that sense, and they have that similar feel, what we might call the brain burners, where you're just trying to figure out what the right thing to do is with those cards. So without getting into the details of each particular game, and I would suggest that you just watch other how-to videos to understand those details, um, let me try to give you a sense of what it feels like, I'll see if this works, uh, for each of the different games. So here we'll start with Gloomhaven because in terms of the choices, it may be actually a little bit simpler than the other ones because your scenario in general, the situation is that your heroes are somewhere in a kind of dungeon type of place um, and there are obstacles that they need to either jump over, disarm, or go around. Um, and then there's the enemies that they're trying to attack. Finally, uh, there may be treasure that you want to collect. Now, there's a great deal of variety because you might have multiple monsters in there, and each of these uh, monsters uh, behave in different ways. It's very unique. Uh, they've got cards that det determine how the monsters will act, um, and so that's very interesting. But in terms of the decision-making about what the characters will do, um, not how they do it, but what they're going to do, like move around or come attack this 
uh, enemy or whatever is fairly simple compared uh, of the three games. So in a very simple sense, here's, for example, three different cards that might be in your hand. I'm not sure how easy it is to see on the video, but I'll just tell you. Um, each card has a top and a bottom uh, place. So you might attack at a range of three and move two. Typically, the movement uh, is on the bottom. Uh, this one here, you can attack at a range of two. Uh, I mean, uh, attack and do damage of two. Um, add an X attack. Uh, where X is double the shield value of the target. So each of the different cards has some kind of twist about how you can attack. Um, but basically you attack on top, and then on the bottom typically you move. Um, here, this one, the next time that you suffer damage, this round, suffer no damage instead. And so the question is, what, which card do I want to play? Now, typically in Gloomhaven, what you're going to do is um, each character will get to play two cards, and you have to play the top of one and the bottom of the other. Now, in the middle of these uh, numbers, that are what we call initiative. And so uh, Gloomhaven is unique in that sense, that there is this thing called initiative, which basically determines the order in which all of the characters, including the enemies, move on the board. So at, when you decide what you're uh, going to do, um, you don't know what these enemies are going to do. And so trying to coordinate what your, you know, the timing of your attack, because, you know, if, if you think you're going to sneak up on them, but they move before you have a chance to move, well, that's foiled your plan. Um, so it's the, the difficulty, the brain burning in this game is trying to figure out that coordination and which particular uh, attack you're going to do because um, in all of the games, uh, once you've uh, used the card, it kind of gets discarded. Now, in Gloomhaven, you can actually discard in one way and you can actually um, lose it for the rest of uh, the, the game. That's uh, called lost, uh, when the card is lost. So once you've discarded a card, um, you can rest to get that back. So let's expand this a little bit more. So the other character, the Enox Brute, um, has several cards over here. One allows him to attack six. He'll gain two experience if he does that, but he loses that card if he does that. Otherwise, he can move and push two. Um, he can kill one adjacent normal enemy. He can move four, he can attack four and stun, or he has a shield, he protects himself with one. Um, and then the, the monsters, um, they're the same type in this particular example. And so here they have initiative of 29. We don't know that yet, but once it was revealed, that's what they would have. And they can move zero and attack with a minus one, but they can target two. And if there's uh, some, uh, uh, magic out there, they can actually push two. Um, so their normal uh, abilities, now there is a normal and elite. Um, they have shielding, so one has a shield of two, or they both have a shield of two, and they have different health levels, like four uh, health and four movement, two attack and three range, seven health, five movement, three attack, and four range. So the question here, in this kind of scenario, what this would be, a turn would be this. Um, you don't know exactly what's going to happen here because they might flip over and have something different than move zero. It might be move two or move negative one or attack. And so uh, which character should go first? Do they go around and go through the door, hop over, or do they attack? What are they going to do? So maybe you could pause the video and think, what would you do in this scenario if you want to know what does it feel like? But that's the essence of the uh, thinking. Now, um, in Bloomhaven, it actually has the most randomness of the three games because every time you attack, you will actually flip over a modifier card. So those cards look like this and you just flip it over, and so this would actually increase your attack plus one, but some of them can nullify your attack, they can double your attack, um, so there is actually a lot of randomness because this particular enemy also, when you flip it over, you don't know what he's going to do. But that is the essence of the decision-making with gloom, within Gloomhaven, and this is the essence of what it's like to play that, so if you kinda, you could pause and think about trying to make that decision. 
So if we think about Mage Knight, here's the kind of decision making that's going on there. So in Mage Knight, um, it's uh, all about uh, crossing the land and attacking different sites. Um, for certain types of monsters, you already know ahead of time uh, what their capabilities are, but for certain areas like this keep or this mage tar, you don't know until you get close to it. And sometimes at nighttime, you don't even know until you try to attack. Now in Mage Knight, the randomness or the variation comes from the different tiles that you select and the different sites, and you don't, you don't know the capabilities of this particular keep and the randomness in your hands. But once those things are known, so for example, right now, this uh, uh, orc, you, you can see, uh, or this enemy here, you can see their defensive capabilities, their attack capabilities, and you know your, the cards in your hands, so you know exactly uh, if you look at the cards and think about them well enough, you know exactly whether or not you can defeat that enemy. Same thing for the other ones. So what we could say is, at the time of attack, there is no randomness. So this game is the least random um, of the three games. Now, the really unique thing in uh, Mage Knight is this stuff that we call mana. And so this is the thing that gives special power to your cards. So each of your cards has a basic type of operation, um, basic type of thing you can do, and a more advanced one. Then the advanced one can be done by using power here. And you can only uh, take one uh, per turn. And then you re-roll it to get see what happens, a different color you might get. So for example here, this particular card allows me to attack or block two, but if I use that special red power, I can get an attack four. This one allows me to move two or move four. This one allows me to actually use some additional, it's called mana, die from the source. Um, or you can, if you use a white mana, um, you can set it to any color except gold and gain two mana tokens of that color. Do not re-roll this die when you return it to the source. Um, this one is the same attack or block two, same as this other one. This one allows you to influence, and this one allows you to either move or attack like an, an archer, like a range attack. Now, an interesting thing in Mage Knight is, um, very often you may have in your hand, uh, you don't have the cards that you need to defeat one of the enemies. Uh, especially with the more advanced enemies, um, they can have a special power. So like this attack has a cold fire attack. So it actually has multiple properties. And the same thing for the um, defense. It is resistant to um, ice attacks or fire attacks. So you can think of these dragons and uh, the special powers and so your normal attack does, is not as effective and so just trying to figure out how do I get enough attack in order to defeat this enemy is the main focus of the game and sometimes or actually quite often in your hand you don't have the cards that you need you may you may have movement cards when you really need more attack cards or you may have attack cards when you need movement cards and so what you can do is you can take a card and you can turn it on its side and play it on its side and so you get one point of anything so it can be used for influence or movement or block or attack now, I forgot to mention, but uh, Gloomhaven has that same kind of ability. You can't really use it for anything. But instead of doing the special thing like this attack three, I could just decide to just do a normal attack of two or a normal move. So every card can either do a normal attack two or a normal move two. Now, because of this, one of the unique things in Mage Knight is that you're very frequently faced with the question of, do I block an attack or not? Now, in Gloomhaven, you do have some cards that give you a shield uh, capability, but that's not very common. In Dungeon Alliance, you have a defense uh, capability associated with the character, but you also have cards that you can boost that block with or that defense with. So in Dungeon Alliance, you have, uh, as you take damage, you put tokens on your hero, common to most dungeon crawlers. And you have tokens for experience as well. In Gloomhaven, you have uh, a health and experience tracker. So when you take damage from an enemy, you turn the wheel and uh, reduce your, your health um, or you increase your experience. In Mage Knight, you track experience on a board here, uh, but they call it fame.
when you take damage, you uh, take these wound cards into your hand, and that's where Mage Knight is quite unique. So all three games uh, track both damage and experience, uh, but they do it a little bit differently, Mage Knight being the most unique, and the other two games being fairly similar to most uh, dungeon-dwelling type of games. So in Mage Knight, uh, when you've finished your turn, uh, you will have a certain number of cards left. And if you take damage, uh, these wound cards will be placed into your hand. And so they effectively m limit what you can do because you have a hand limit. And so with these wound cards in your hand, you're not going to die, but you just can do less things. And eventually you may need to rest because you can be knocked out. So in most dungeon crawl type of games, uh, the typical approach is for your character or your hero to uh, defeat or kill the monster before that monster can attack you. And so that's how you avoid damage in most situations. In Mage Knight, the situation is a little bit different. There are uh, cards that allow you to do range or siege attacks against the monsters, and in which case you can actually destroy the monster without them attacking you. But in most cases, you have to explicitly block their attack, and you must block it completely. You can't do a partial type of block. Also, for the basic monsters, you can attack them from uh, afar or adjacent, but for the uh, keep and the mage tower and the cities and uh, places like that, you have to actually enter into that space, then attack, and if you're not successful, you get kicked out. So I forgot to show you a city, so let me show you. Here's what the city looks like. But fundamentally, the challenge within Mage Knight, within each turn, and especially when you get to the upper levels, in the, near the end of the game, is to be able to move into an area, block the enemy's attack, and then also defeat the enemy, all in the same time with a limited set of cards in your hand. Now, to get a little bit of a feel for this, this uh, keep over here has a uh, fortified uh, armor of seven, and they attack with a three. Um, and if you have uh, paid attention to the cards, you can pause the video and think, how would I actually move into this area, um, block the three, and attack uh, with a seven? And notice, as I move in here, the other thing is terrain costs different amounts. And so to move into this requires a four movement. And how can I do that with this just small amount of cards? So pause and think about that a little bit. So that's the first level of decision making in Mage Knight. So that's just to attack one site. Now that takes us to the essence of what Mage Knight is. And I can show you this by this simple example here. This is one of the basic enemies and it has an armor of three and attack of four. So that's how you start the game. Now, at the end of the game, I may be attacking a city that has actually four different monsters, and they have uh, seven, seven, six, eight, the total armor here, and then they've got these attacks here, and these attacks can be twice as effective when they have that blue and red coloring on them. To, so to, and then you see over here this brutal and poison, so the damage they do is incredible, and the amount of uh, attack they ha uh, defense that they have and the attack they have against you is just insane compared to the first one. And that is only one city. So in the Solo Conquest, the basic game, uh, you actually are supposed to take out two cities. In addition, if you can see here, the different terrains have uh, different movement amounts. And so when you first are starting out in these nice green plains, uh, it only takes two movement to do that. But at the end, when you're getting close to these cities, most of the movements are like four and five just to move around or get close to the city. So the fundamental essence of Mage Knight is that you're going from a, a basic hero that can do hardly anything into this hero that just can do these amazing, incredible things. And so the second part of the challenge space is, how in the world am I going to do that? 
Um, you go to monasteries and recruit people. You go to villages and recruit people. You go into uh, the different other sites like dungeons and uh, ancient cities, uh, ancient ruins, and uh, try to accomplish things that allow you to get uh, more cards. So you can draft uh, spells, you can draft um, artifacts or um, advanced action cards, and you add those to your hand so that you will become more and more powerful. So in that way, Mage Knight is absolutely nothing like Gloomhaven in that sense, because in Mage Knight, you're in, uh, leveling up incredibly in one game, whereas in Gloomhaven, it takes many, many sessions in order to, for you to level up that much. Now, this is where I would say that Mage Knight is kind of sandboxy in the sense that there's no real clear uh, way of how am I supposed to get to my goal of conquering this city. There are other scenarios that you can do as well, but how do I reach that end goal? Should I go to a monastery? I don't know. Should I go to this dungeon? I don't know. So that's totally up to the player, um, and for new players to Mage Knight, that can be overwhelming. And I've played this uh, uh, quite a bit and still struggle with that kind of thing. So many p people need to may need to uh, go online and find out strategies, or they might uh, look at videos to figure out how to do things. On the other hand, Gloomhaven and Dungeon Alliance are much more straightforward into how to accomplish your goal. So in Gloomhaven and Dungeon Alliance, the goal is very simple. Defeat the enemies. The question is, which cards do I use in order to accomplish that? So to some extent, uh, this question of how do I accomplish my goal, what do I need to accomplish my goal or to win the game, may be a barrier of entry for a, a lot of people with Mage Knight. That, that can be something that's a challenge that's interesting to some, but maybe make it very difficult for some. And uh, especially when you think that you might have to do this for three hours and you're not sure what you're doing, uh, that may prevent it from coming to the table a lot. Now, Gloomhaven has a similar uh, type of barrier, but it's a different kind. In Gloomhaven, because you're not leveling up uh, throughout the scenario, you're going through many different sessions with the same characters. What if I choose the wrong characters? How do I know which characters work well together and which ones don't? So uh, figuring that out can be uh, difficult. You know, if you pick two characters that don't work well together, um, then you're just setting yourself up for frustration for many gameplays. Dungeon Alliance, on the other hand, doesn't have any barrier to entry like that because uh, you can just pick whatever heroes that you want and play the game. And if you don't like that, you can pick another set and play a completely different game. And so there's no real challenge to figure out uh, what it is that you're trying to accomplish. Everything is the tactical kind of uh, combat, co combat of the enemies. Now, there is a challenge to figure out how am I going to complete a quest when you uh, work with that way, but it's not the same barrier of entry as it is for the other two games. So the final thing I want to talk about uh, Mage Knight uh, before I go more to Dungeon Alliance is with respect to the wounds coming into your hand. So when you first start playing Mage Knight, uh, you probably will have the thinking, the people probably have the thinking of, I want to avoid wounds. At least that's what my thinking was. And in most dungeon crawlers, that's what you're trying to do, avoid wounds. And you want to do that in Mage Knight as well. But it turns out that you really can't avoid wounds. And sometimes you just want to not block, take your hits, and go in there to take out that enemy. And so at first, that's kind of a real barrier because you're really hesitant to take wounds. And so as a result, you may not be making as much progress through the game. Because remember, it's not individual battles. It's the whole thing that you're trying to accomplish. So this does bring out a way in which each of the individual heroes in Mage Knight are unique. Um, so for example, I believe this uh, hero's name is Arethia, but in any case, uh, she can use these uh, skill tokens that allow her to actually use wounds to her advantage. So in some cases, you can turn these wounds sideways and they're worth two points. Um, or in the other case, you can turn it into a red or black mana. So that's very powerful. So when you uh, first start playing Mage Knight, this is a good character to start with. 
So that's just to talk a little bit about wounds, but it also does point out that um, these uh, characters, these heroes, can be very unique because of their skill tokens. But each individual hero can draft skill tokens from the dummy player or other players. They go into a pool that you can draft from. So um, you can kind of customize your hero. Okay, so let's take a look at Dungeon Alliance. Now, I actually have another video that I'll link in here um, which compares uh, Dungeon Alliance directly with Mage Knight because I would call Dungeon Alliance Mage Knight in a dungeon. Um, that's not exactly true. We've already shown some of the differences, um, but basically that's kind of how it feels, uh, but I would say it actually is more engaging. Um, so you can see uh, that video to see more detail, but just basically to give you a feel of what this game kind of feels like, um, you again will have a hand of cards that you're going to draft, but this time you will have four heroes. Um, you will be playing these four heroes uh, no matter whether you're playing solo or competitive or cooperative. Um, so that's different than Mage Knight completely. Um, and it's similar to uh, Gloomhaven a little bit. Um, as you go through the dungeon, the challenge point is, um, do I explore more? Do I uh, defeat or attack these um, enemies? And uh, which hero should I use? Now, in most games, it's a little bit difficult to play multiple heroes if you're playing solo, and I like to play just as a true solo in most cases. But this game is well designed for multiple um, heroes. And you can see at the end of the round, this is about how much space it takes up. So it's, it's really not that much. So in contrast, here's Gloomhaven for just two characters. Uh, so that's really taking up about eight times as much space. The other thing to be aware of is that uh, Dungeon Alliance is a Euro-style hand management type of game, and in most of games like that, you would have a hand for each hero that you would use. But in Dungeon Alliance, you use one hand for all four heroes, and you just take turns uh, uh, applying them for each of the heroes. So playing four heroes in Dungeon Alliance is roughly equivalent to playing just one hero in any other game. So you really get the advantage of um, feeling that team feeling of multiple heroes without the complexity typical in most games. You just have one hand. So the unique thing here is that you have cards. So for example, this particular card is directly uh, related to this particular hero. So it works only with this hero. And this card here only works with that hero. Uh, these cards work with either one of them. Um, and this card only works with military heroes. So that would be this hero and that hero. So I have to decide, one of the major things is, which hero is going to go first? And then which cards am I going to use? And again, like Mage Knight, do I want to use uh, points for movement? Do I want to use points for attacking? Um, how do I want to do this? Or exploring. Now, just as in Mage Knight, in Mage Knight you can play a card sideways and get a point. Uh, this is a little bit different, but you can do something similar. I can take two cards that are not that effective and uh, turn them down um, and play them uh, as uh, for a different kind of thing, for whatever point that I want to use it, attack or defense or uh, something like movement. So just like Mage Knight, you level up throughout the game, um, and the way you do that is as you defeat monsters and explore treasure, you gain experience points, and then you can use those to purchase uh, different cards in a um, draw area. So like Mage Knight, you add those to your hand, and you can use those uh, to attack monsters. But unlike Mage Knight, you level up a, a lot more quickly, actually. Because as long as you're uh, defeating monsters, you can potentially um, get a new card to your deck every single turn. Now over here, just like in Mage Knight, when you flip over a tile uh, to, to explore, um, you've got tiles that you can add to the dungeon exploring. But the interesting thing here about Dungeon Alliance is I actually get to choose which uh, tile that I want to place, and I also get to choose the orientation. And that affects uh, how I attack, you know, the, the how much movement I need and things like that. So you can kind of think of it, I guess, as, as if you're, you know, 
you've scouted out an area in the dungeon and what part of the dungeon you're going to explore. But that's a very interesting uh, kind of thing. So it's a, 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 an important decision point. Now, similar to Gloomhaven, but different than Mage Knight, is that you have a set of cards that you flip over each turn, and you uh, use these cards. They control um, the monsters. It's kind of an AI type of card. But even in these, you have decisions to make because uh, based upon the what you choose and what the board situation is, you can actually... If, uh, choose the damage or the pain that you're going to take, but they get worse and worse. But an important point in Dungeon Alliance is that you need to kind of be aware of what's going to happen um, because uh, if the monster cannot do action one, they move on to action two. So to some extent, uh, it benefits you to actually have a lot of monsters in, uh, well, not a lot, but at least a few monsters in the dungeon. And yet by the end, you have to, to, to uh, kill them all or defeat them all. And so uh, there's always monsters running through the, the dungeon trying to attack. But unlike Zombie Side or even the dungeons in Dragons where all the monsters are kind of constantly moving, um, the, the AI determines uh, the effective monster to attack each turn. So as we start to wrap it up and we consider these uh, three games, uh, they're similar in the sense that they're all Euro-style um, monster attack things, a kind of dungeon crawl. Really, Dungeon Alliance is really the only one that really has that in-the-dungeon feel. Mage Knight and Dungeon Alliance are very, very similar in how they feel in terms of the hand management and things like that. They're both basically deck building types of uh, games, whereas Gloomhaven is not. You do build a deck, uh, but it's really over mil multiple sessions. Um, but uh, Mage Knight really has much more of a sandboxy feel and what am I going to do? Whereas here uh, in Dungeon Alliance, it's very clear and you are engaged the whole time. If you're prone to paralysis analysis, all three of these games are going to get you there. But if you like it, that's what these games are all about. So in terms of winning a uh, game or scenario, uh, what do they feel like? Well, um, in Gloomhaven, it's very clear what you're trying to do. Um, and your progress is pretty easy to see because it's all based upon how many cards you have left in your hand. Uh, but they can kind of go out quickly uh, if you lose the cards. So it's not 100% clear about how long it's going to last um, and how much you have left. So part of the thing in your mind is always, do I have enough to be able to finish before I run out of cards? Um, in Mage Knight, uh, the timer is the number of rounds. So in Solo Conquest, for example, there's three days and three nights. And um, those can move quickly or slowly, slowly depending upon what they call a dumber, dummy player, uh, how it does. But it's pretty easy to see when you're going to run out. But because the adventure is not really clear how to get to the place where you're leveled up enough to defeat that city, um, it's hard to judge how far along am I in this. In Dungeon Alliance, the timer is extremely clear. It's four rounds. And it's very easy to see how far you've progressed um, because, in, for example, in the solo game, you're going to explore a total of nine, but you start have the starting one. So that's eight tiles. So basically two tiles um, per round. So in conclusion, uh, these are all great games. Um, which one's going to hit the table the most? Definitely Dungeon Alliance. Uh, why is that? Uh, Mage Knight, uh, just that lack of clarity on how to get there. Um, sometimes, you know, I can play for an hour and a half and just kind of get uh, worn out or tired, and I feel like I haven't really accomplished a whole whole lot unless I have gone through the whole thing. Now, if you have the ability to just leave this on table, which I don't, uh, then that, that might be different. Um, uh, same thing for Gloomhaven. You know, the, the setup and takedown is just a, a pretty big barrier here, even though the, it's a, a great game. 
Um, this one here, uh, it's very easy to bring out and set up. It, it has a lot of parts, that's true, but if you get a tray organizer or something like that, it's much easier. Um, and then it's very clear what you're trying to accomplish. And um, even if you didn't make it all the way through, you're, you're uh, just defeating monster after monster after monster. So even if I finish, stopped halfway in the game, I feel like I've accomplished a lot of things here. And I can always change to a different team. And so it feels very different. So it's just something that motivates you to play over and over and over again. So, uh, your interest in games and what you're trying to accomplish and your, your situation may be quite different if you're trying to play with multiple players, could be quite a bit different. I hear that the uh, you know downtime is pretty high on this, but I don't know really how it compares in Gloomhaven and Mage Knight. Um, so, you decide on what your scenario is, but I hope that was helpful for you to at least um, see uh, a comparison of these games. And if you know of other Euro-style dungeon crawlers, uh, please let us know in the comments. And I hope that was helpful, and enjoy dungeon dwelling.